there's um we know morgan is gonna go back i'm gonna i'm gonna go up there oh you think it's better oh i think it's better up there how it's, many people are there's, up there um right now there are about uh seven on this side and three on the other side of oh, the road maybe we should all move yeah, I think so. Because more people will see us, and anybody who's coming here is going to come through the entrance. Yeah, they're going to go through the entrance. Hello! <laughs> All right. Peace! Hello! How are you guys? Okay, yeah. I have something for you. You have something? They do weekend flights about once a month. They do uh, night flights um, several times a month. Um, at least it appears that way from where we live in Winooski because they fly right over us. F-35s are nuclear capable weapons and uh, they are ear splitting and also just so dangerous. There have been wrecks in a lot of places and we're afraid that they're gonna happen where we live. It's more than just not in my backyard. Uh, it is, these, these weapons are incredibly dangerous to both the proponents of democracy and anybody else. They're dangerous weapons and uh, I wish that the U.S. would join the, the uh, treaty to uh, acknowledge that nuclear weapons are illegal. These paper cranes, by the way, are from Japan. They were uh, folded by Japanese uh, people who can remember Hiroshima and Nagasaki uh, and know what it's like when nuclear weapons are used on any population. The Peace Crane, you know, has the story of Sadako Sasaki, which is, you can read, read a book called Sadako Sasaki and the Thousand Paper Cranes, because the idea is that when you fold a thousand cranes, you give a wish and we wish for peace. So there you have it. just like all over Vermont. I have a toddler. Uh, it sucks. I hate the F-35s. I hate airplanes. Um, the F-35s wake him up when he's napping. I've covered his ears before when we're outside. They're terrifying. They carry illegal weapons. Um, I'm one of the organizers with the group called Safe Landing BTV. And so we're, it's the same uh, core group that fought and won when the Burling, when Burlington Airport tried to expand, 
and we organized, and we were victorious, and we have a W, which is awesome, and now we're going on the offensive. So we just wrote our goals. Two goals, no expansion of the airport at all, protect the working class neighborhood, of the Chamberlain neighborhood of South Burlington, protect Winooski, protect uh, everywhere around the airport. So no expansion, that's our first goal. And our second goal is to immediately ramp down aviation because of the climate emergency. There's been one airport in the whole world that has reduced emissions because of the climate emergency. That is Amsterdam, that's Schiphol Airport in Amsterdam. That's the first airport in the world and our goal is to be the second airport in the world. And we can do it. It's a winnable fight. We can beat Nick Longo, we can beat Mayor Weinberger and the city council. They own and operate the airport and we can put this public pressure on them to immediately ramp down aviation because of the climate emergency. So that includes the F-35, that includes private aircraft, that includes commercial aviation, and we're organizing. We have our first meeting at 1 p.m. today at Venetian Soda Lounge, that's on Pine Street in Burlington. It's an open meeting, if you wanna come meet some of us, please do. They've got cocktails, mocktails, some food, um, but it's a good place to get to know each other and to really ramp up this campaign. It's a winnable fight, and I hope that you can join us. So the anti-war crowd, the anti-nuclear crowd, the climate crowd, the housing crowd, um, we can all work together to win this fight. So, yeah, thanks. Um, Venetian Soda Lounge, 266 Pine Street in Burlington. And if you want to learn more, go to safelandingbtv.org or follow us on Instagram at safelandingbtv. Thanks. Okay, so we have time for a couple more speakers who wants to be next. Come on, we need some. All right, I'll say a few words. So I hope everybody plans on coming down to the Venetian Soda Lounge, as Dan mentioned. We are going to build a movement. We're going to build a huge campaign to stop the F-35 and to reduce airport emissions. Did you know that if you added up all the carbon dioxide emissions from all the commercial airliner flights. It's about the same as the emissions from just one airplane, the F-35. So the way to cut airport emissions the quickest is to remove the F-35 from this airport. This is the this is the way to get started with reducing airport emissions. Get rid of the F-35. It does us no good. There is no good whatsoever from having an F-35 in a city. This is the place you don't want to have dangerous military equipment. The military itself will tell you that. Their regulations prohibit military operations in populated areas. Their regulations require what they call distinction, separation of military forces from populated areas. And this F-35 is the most valuable of military assets. It's the place where it will be targeted by Russian and Chinese nuclear missiles because it is so valuable a weapon. That's one of the reasons you want to keep it away from populated areas because you're making tens of thousands of Vermonters into human shields for the F-35 by basing it in a city. This is insanity. This is so much in violation of military regulations and international law. It's a war crime. And no one has pointed out the war crime of mingling military forces with populated areas more than the United States. We criticize all these insurgent groups where we're conducting military operations to do it for, for being part of the civilian population. And here we are right here in Vermont creating the war crime of human shielding. We don't want to be targeted by nuclear missiles. This is not just a matter of the 115 decibel noise. 
Dan pointed out that he has an infant son, one year old. Why should that child be subjected to 115 decibels for the next 18 years, hundreds of times a month to be exposed to noise at this level? This is damaging our cell. What kind of military damages your own people? How do they even think about doing a thing like that? Okay, so now we have time. Oh, I just wanted to mention one more thing. Well, I just, just, to, just thought you might like to know that here in South Burlington is where the airport is. This is the city that has the airport. And I've been doing some research and I've learned that the city council of every town, city, and village in Vermont is delegated with the authority to protect the health, safety, welfare, and convenience of the people. Did you know that? By, the, by state law. There's a state law that says that vehicles of every kind can be regulated by the state, by the, the city, state, uh, towns, and villages to protect health, safety, welfare, and convenience. Well, there is a vehicle right here at this airport. And that means that the city of South Burlington is empowered by our state to regulate it. So, and the federal government delegates the power to the states to regulate the National Guard of that state, to regulate the training of the National Guard, the training. Well, that's what they're doing here, they're training. So this is a state function and the state is delegated to the city to regulate. So what does this mean? We just need our city councils, our select boards to pass ordinances. So for that reason, I'm gonna run for the city council in the March election. And I'm hoping people from all the other towns and villages and cities around here, whether you live in Minuski or Williston or Burlington or Essex or any other town, you will run. And why not? Let's make this an issue in the election. We're going to, we're going to be continuing to have events, but we can also put it forward to the public that we have the power. I think that's the one thing people don't realize. They think that this is federal, that you can't fight the military, whatever, all kinds of reasons, but none of them are true. We have the power, we're the people, and we are going to assert that power. So let's, let's think about putting forward ourselves as candidates. Okay, who else wants to speak? Sure. Hello everybody, my name is Muafiq. I'm a member of Vernon for Justice in Palestine. Maybe a lot of people, they will ask why I am here. We are co-sponsoring with Cochrane this event. They asked us to do so. But the second question, because I live here and I worry that I care as the previous speaker about F-35 and the nuclear and the weaponizing of our community here but the most important maybe you are worried about the sound of f-35 but us in palestine in gaza strip if you are 15 years ago you have been bombarded by f-35 in four wars in four wars in the last 15 years on a gaza that 2.2 million people are living over there and they have been in an open air jail for 15 years because of the siege that Israel with support of the United States are creating over there. You are worried about the sound, which is legitimate and we should talk about it. It's a health problem, it's an environmental problem. But think about the F-35 that bombing people in Palestine, in Libya, on Iraq, in Syria, and in Yemen. What about that? No, no, and you say, maybe, oh, it's far away. I live in Vermont. Vermont National Guard and Air Force are training Israeli now. 
they travel all the time and train them. All this war over there is your tax dollars, and you are responsible for it. How much you going to hide from it, it's your responsibility. And if you are silent, you are part of the crime. Yeah. <laughs> interested in the F-35 issue when I started looking at military poisons, and particularly PFAS, and um, we actually did some testing here of the water uh, for PFAS. And I think it's really important to recognize that all of these things are connected. We talk about climate change, but getting people to also recognize what Rachel Parts had recognized years ago that we're poisoning ourselves and that the military has a huge number of poisons and Superfund sites across the U.S. We may not be a Superfund site here, but we have PFOS contamination still. Um, and supposedly the Department of Defense has finally, after like almost 50 years, recognized that they should stop using AFF firefighting foam with PFOS in it. However, the irony is that they said they're going to stop in October of 2024 and use PFOS-free foam. And some of our experts, actually military firefighters, have said that the specs for that foam still contain PFOS. So it is so important for us to be vigilant at all times. And tying in the nuclear aspect, one of our people is an expert who looks at what's happening around the world at U.S. military bases. And in Okinawa, we have literally poisoned the water with radiation. Um, so there are some really serious issues about what we're also doing in other countries around the world. As, you know, we're destroying them, and we're poisoning their soils, and whatever you name, uh, we're doing it. But there was a great article this morning, Google article on the F-35, I'm not sure if it was totally humorous, but it basically says that the F-35s have an ejectile dysfunction problem, <laughs> ED. An ejectile dysfunction problem when they take off and when they fly out. So we, we should take that seriously, because those kinds of accidents cause all kinds of pollution. I think that Leahy's last vote before he retired was to vote for the omnibus spending bill, which included earmarks, millions of dollars of earmarks for this airport. Yeah. Money that hasn't yet been spent. This airport is a bad neighbor to this neighborhood and to surrounding communities. The military is a bad neighbor. It's actively harming people. And I think that, um, Holding the airport to account and holding the military to account as a neighbor is really important to me. And I, I felt so um, inspired by the win that we had when the airport was wanting to expand into the neighborhood. Well, we prevented that from happening. And that was incredible. And as Isaac alluded to, there are winnable fights. That was a winnable fight we need to hold this airport to account. And I think that there is um, a convergence of all of these issues around, um, in, in many ways, the climate, for one. Aviation flying is a climate killer. Most people don't know that, and those who can afford to fly are really killing folks all over the world who can't afford to fly. And that, to me, is a social justice issue that many people are not even aware of. If you're looking to reduce your so-called carbon footprint in this world, that's something really important that you can do. The F-35 is also a climate killer. Emissions from the F-35, emissions from all flights out of this airport are not counted in the Climate Action Plan or for South Burlington or the Net Zero Roadmap for Burlington. Hundreds of thousands of tons of CO2 every year that are not counted. That must be done, and that's something that we're working on. Um, 
And I believe that that is a winnable fight. I truly do. And, and we really can make some progress, I think, in that regard. And something else um, that I think is important to, to mention here with regard to the F-35 is that, and, and the airport and preventing airport expansion, people are, are, um, are complaining about the housing shortage. It's dire. We know it is. I consider housing a human right. The F-35 is preventing 44 acres of land on which 200 homes were destroyed, preventing housing from being built in a beautiful, walkable community right here in Chamberlain. People, business owners, are having a hard time hiring because people cannot find housing. That is an economic issue. If you care about local economics, if you care about supporting businesses, then you should care about the fact that the F-35 is denying, is preventing hundreds of houses from being built. So I just needed to, um, to kind of bring that into the mix because, you know, I think it, all, it so often gets back to the economic argument and folks lose sight of that. Um, and I, I guess that's it. I live in Burlington. I work in South Burlington. We work together. This is my mom, my stepfather, and they will attest that it is literally painful when the F-35s fly over. We work next to uh, Pizza Hut, and you know I remember at, at one of the South Burlington meetings in the spring, hearing from a librarian Winooski who can no longer read outdoors with his children, with his students, and that is unacceptable, and it's got to stop. And that's all I have to say. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Great job. Oh, I, I wanted to say something. I think that politically, um, where you can get people to fear for their lives, like, like with, like with, and, um, like with the mil, with the military and the, the dangers from from other countries, you, it's it's easy to exaggerate the dangers that other countries pose, and and it's and it's hard to control spending. And I have, and I, and I have, a quick the military. And the um, and, and the healthcare industry because people I mean the healthcare industry people do complain something about when they when the price gets really really astronomical so they're a little easier a little bit easier to hold accountable but but not the military because the people are willing to spend anything if they if they if, um, if they if they fear for their lives from the from this from 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 this from the string from the foreigner. That, that, that's a really uh, that's a that's a, that's difficult to overcome to get to get to get to get, to get a move to, to get a movement against the to 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 try and, and, and hold down and hold back military spending. So true. Agreed. Agreed. If no one else is having spoken yet, I've got one more uh, event to plug. You know, it's about making connection with other movements and other organizers, and I appreciate it. Um, someone bringing up the Battery Park movement and what all the ra racial justice organizing that came in the summer of 2020. Um, there are people still organizing around those issues and they didn't win everything they wanted to win. It's likely that the police budget or the Democrats are going to push to in increase the police budget again. So there's uh, an event on Tuesday night at the library in Burlington, 6 p.m. Um, so the Fletcher Free Library. And um, it's got a bunch of really great organizers. Uh, Jessica Laporte, um, who works with People for Police Accountability, um, and a, a few other really great organizers. And so I just want to really push climate and you know military and peace-oriented people to also engage with those other local fights that, again, are still, still connected to the same underlying system. And so when we think about movement building, it's not just building a movement to do to, to, to aim at this little piece of the puzzle. This is just emblematic of everything that's going on. And so there's other fights that are going on. That's an awesome one. We need to, to support that and show solidarity. So again, Tuesday night, um, this week, 6 p.m. at the library. It'd be awesome to see some of you there. And before we disband too, um, if you want to see me and get on the safe landing email list, please do. I can write your email down on my phone and hope to see you at one o'clock in 45 minutes. Um, I'll facilitate that meeting. I think there'll be a lot of people there and then facilitate it and then close and then there'll be time for people to hang out and get to know each other too. Thanks, Dan. 
I'd like to, I'm Bob Axelson. I come from Plainfield. And I'd just like to say a couple of things. One is that it's all part of the corporate, military, governmental stuff. If these guys didn't sign up for it, if we didn't elect them or appoint them, we wouldn't be in the shithole that we're in today. All right? And it's, it's just needs to stop. Every morning I get up and I try to think how I can best spend my day trying to shut this crap down because I've got survivors, I've got myself, probably got another quarter century to live here, but, you know, it's, it's just, where do we stop this stuff? You know, every day, you need to be a climate warrior, you need to be an F-35 warrior, you need to just be ready to say no to whoever you need to say no to and tell them to stop. You know, don't vote for them, consider not paying, figure out how much percentage of your tax dollar or percentage of the federal budget goes to the military and consider not paying that when you pay your taxes. Cut them off at, at, at the, the throat, you know. Don't let them keep doing this because it's just, it's impossible to live on a planet that's going to be dying day by day by day. Two more years, one more year, whatever it's going to take to get past the tipping point, then you think we're going to have trouble with F-35s, we're going to have trouble with everything going on in the world. And it's just time to put your foot on the brake and say no, 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 no. That's not the way that people should be living, and that's not the way that people should be treated. This is the first, I don't know if you knew, but Monday was the first death by murder of the Atlanta police of a climate activist. Murder for protecting a forest. So think about this bullshit cop industrial complex that's going on paramilitary stuff, no, 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 and no. Thanks. I'd like to ask, has, have people been in touch with Becca Ballant? I mean, we have a new representative in Congress representing us, and she's a progressive person. I'm just wondering where, who do you think she's, I, I mean, we, we should pressure her uh, on these issues because she's uh, maybe she's between Bernie and uh, and Leahy in terms of the politics of, uh, of peace and war, and so don't don't forget her. That's that would be valuable to do. There are a few more flyers here, and we can take bring them to the uh, to the event at one o'clock. And uh, any other speakers? Anyone else to comment? Well, thanks for everybody for coming. This was yeah. really good to get the event going. We, this is our second event this month. Here. Um, Dan organized a terrific event at City Hall on January 1st. And I think we are seeing an upsurge in activism in the Burlington area. Let's keep it going. Thank you. We could roll up some